As you can see again, we got more stuff going with the old subcompact tractor. What we got now, I had this idea to make a lawn striper. So, you know the poor me, cheap and easy way to do it. I already had this stuff laying in the back, so I was like, instead of buying one, I might as well just make it. It can't be that hard. It's just laying on the grass to lay it over one way. So, between that, and I just installed all the new windows in my house, so instead of buying a $600 flap to go in front of that when I'm mowing, I also thought, how can I make one that I can do multiple things with? So I don't have to change it out. If I still want to use this, so it's not shooting all over, or if it has to, to be like, you know, different angles so I can still shoot out. Or, obviously I cut this down and the deck's all the way lower. So once it's on the tractor, it's not this low, but. Or have it so it's completely blocked off. So nothing shooting out towards windows or cars, just of my own. So I bought also some new blades. So right now we'll get going. Pretty much show you guys how to make your own lawn striper. So then you don't have to buy one. Well, you can see two things done here. And uh, by the time I post this video, I've already have tried this, so I'll know that it worked good. Otherwise, I just won't get posted. So you've seen me put these bolts in, just drill through and I, tight I got them all tightened up. And then obviously I knew it was gonna happen. This was a little flappy on this side and I wanted it even across when my lawn lines were going. So I put a board on the back side of this, put three bolts through it. So it gave it a little more support. Obviously when it picks up, you'll see how it rides perfectly angled across the grass. And then this, put some GRKs and some washers for extra support. And for now, this is gonna be my shoot to block it off when I'm going past my overpriced windows on the house. Next, we'll do the daily, daily, yearly maintenance and change out the blades. Well, we got the two fuel filters changed off of the John Deere, got this done and updated, got this done, set the wheels to ride height so you guys could see how this was gonna work to block the grass from the old expensive windows. Got the strap on it right now, gonna lift it up with the loader and clean out the deck. Then I'll go through each procedure you have to do with greasing those, greasing that, show you exactly how I did that fuel filter and the one that's underneath right there. And then mow once and do an oil change. Go. 
cleaning and changing of the blades portion of this video obviously you just scrape down the deck and then get it about as clean as you can then for the blade changing it's a size 18 millimeter and you can if you don't have an impact jam a piece of wood right here and then take them off but I just put the socket on Sipped them off with the impact. And then most of your blades will show which side goes up. But these are the way these go. The cutting edge is right here. And right here. And then I put them up on. Tighten this till it's flush. Took the impact. Zipped them around a little bit. Just so they were tight, tight. And then on these 60 inch D drive over decks this these three bolts you want to tighten to 90 foot pounds on the 60 d's on the 54 d's these nut bolts are 50 foot pounds for those of you that have the 54 inch deck but that's about it for the deck on these and then regular maintenance from up above on the deck is your three grease certs on each pulley. So there's one under that black cover, one right there, and one under this black cover. Let's see if you can see it. I'll have to clean it first, but yeah, it's right there. And then I use my Milwaukee. I have it set on single stage speed. And then I read somewhere a while ago that it was four or five pumps to go on each one of those, I'm almost positive. So I just have my trigger pull set on that and that's what I do all of them at. And then on the mower itself, if you have a 120R loader, there is 12 just on the loader. There's six on each side. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. Same on the other. And then there is four grease certs on the drive shaft of the mower itself. So, oh no, that's if you have the drive shaft model. This is obviously hydro, but I have that written down for those that had the older style. Uh, there is three on the mid PTO to the mower deck. So that PTO right there, there's three. And then the three that are on the uh, other drive shaft, you have to take that right there off. And there's one. And then you can see You'll see once you get under there that there's one more. Otherwise, that's about it for maintenance. So we get to change the hydraulic filter and the engine oil. All right, so going off the last portion of the video where I was explaining the two grease certs on that drive shaft right there. We'll keep going with our grease cert. See, there's one under that cover. Take the cover off, you'll see it. And then one right there. But as I was saying about keep going with the grease section of this video of maintaining your subcompact tractor, on um, these quick connects for the mower deck, there's three just on the shaft right here. You can see there's one, two, and then there's the third right there. Obviously you just turn the shaft 
so they're easy to get to and grease roughly four or five pumps into each. I think John Deere recommends on theirs every 50 hours. And then there's also one second. This is going to be complicated to get to, but I obviously already done it once. On the upper shaft right there, there's another one. And then I'm pretty sure as you go along, it's going to be hard to pick up with the camera, but there's two on that shaft, which is per se, to explain it easy to everyone, the highest upshaft goes from the engine over to your uh, pump for the hydraulics all the way in the rear of the tractor. But while we're on this side, going back to explaining the fuel. So this side of the tractor, starter side, or driver's side, if you want to call it that, right under this floorboard is that filter. I mean, I changed it. This tractor only has 300 and something hours on it. These are recommended every 400 along with the cartridge, which is on the other side that you've seen in previously, but every 400 hours. But since I got it, I figured I might as well do it. Just a little earlier, no big deal. That's pretty much it for your grease certs. And then the next portion of this will go to the hydraulic filter and oil change. We'll get that here in just a little bit. All right, so same side as the easiest way to get to your grease certs I was explaining previously and this fuel filter, you'll wanna do it recommends every 200 hours, you'll want to do this hydraulic fluid filter right there. It's pretty easy to get to. Take it out. And with the tractor cold and off is the easiest because you're only replacing the filter. You don't need to do all the hydraulic fluid every 200 hours. I think that's recommended at 1,000 hours to change the fluid with it you where the dipstick is to check that too if you have a John Deere it's LVA 16054 for the hydraulic filter and you just spin that off and then spin your new one on tighten it just a little bit with your oil filter wrench and then you're good and then while we're down here I already did it but we'll do the oil so you Take your drain plug out, which is the easiest way to explain. Right above that drive shaft. It's the only one that has a shield on it. Your drive on these tractors, the only drive shaft with the shield, it's right above it. I torqued it to roughly 30 pounds. I could not find a specification on it, which I should have probably just looked up the motor. That would have gave me a specification because it's not technically a John Deere motor, so. It wasn't in the manual. But drain that, then we'll go to the other side. You'll want to take your, there's that other cartridge filter I was talking about. Geez, now we're all over the place. But you want to take your filter off, which is right there. Obviously let it drain. I already did it, put the new filter on. Make sure, obviously, like every oil filter change, you make sure the old, you can tell the difference right here, hydraulic, which is this one, and then your engine oil filter, but difference in size here. But as I was saying, make sure the old gasket comes off with the filter. And then when you go to put that new filter on, you just use a little oil 
around it to seal it back up. And John Deere's subcompact tractor engine filter would be right there. M8064-18. <clears throat> Once you get it drained, put your dipstick, well, pull your dipstick out just a tad, which is right there. And then you'll put your uh, drain plug back in, oil filter back on, and then John Deere recommends this plus 52, 1540, and that's where you'll fill it. Takes, uh, some forms say 2.7, some say 2.9 quarts. Right now, I have 2.7 in it, and then obviously we'll start it and check it see if it's right on or not and then you're done instead of replacing my air filter this time i just blew it out with the air hose i know some will say that's not correct but it was pretty dirty and before till i get another one i'd rather have it because since there's a pre-filter in there and the main filter i'd rather have it cleaner than not but yeah check your antifreeze battery connections You'll be completely ready to go. Keep adding the rest of the part numbers like I've been doing. That cartridge filter right there is MIU804736 for pretty much the 1025s, 1026, and 1023s all run that same filter. And the inline filter that I showed you guys, which is right under that floorboard, that part number is AM. 116304, which are right here and here. That shows this number in line. That's the cartridge one.